Hello everybody, my name is Alexandria. I'm a historian. I'm an author. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Black Death book by J. Hecker. It really is a must-have book for your collection, This book folks. is filled with bonus material, so many pictures, medical insight, a must-have right from the eyes of the medical people that were really on the front lines. It's folks. a must-have for your collection. We're going to go into our show on the Black Death in our show we're going to show a link a link where you where can you can purchase the black death by j hecker a must have for your collection an insight into the black death plague, this is folks. the version you want to have folks bonus edition bonus material must have book folks. enjoy the show folks Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Tickle Trunk of Horror slash World Paranormal Research Society. You were Timothy and Alexandria. Hello everybody. And so today we're going to be talking about the Black Death, also known as the Black Plague. A plague that wiped out millions of people in the 14th century. But I think before we go into our show on the Black Death, Let's kind of really talk about what's happening now with the coronavirus. And really, the coronavirus can affect, infect anyone. Um, but many reports have shown that your social economic status can play a huge role with a combination of job security, access to health care, and mobility and uh, widen the gap in infection and mortality rates between the rich and the poor and the rich really are able to work remotely flee to resorts etc and the poor in society are packed into small living quarters and really are compelled to keep showing up for work each and every day and some of the symptoms of the coronavirus slash COVID-19 fever tiredness dry cough some people may experience aches and pains nasal, nasal congestion runny nose sore throat and diarrhea and on average they say it takes five to six days from when someone is infected with the virus for symptoms to show. However, it can take up to 14 days. And that's really on what's happening with COVID-19 in a nutshell. And so, yeah, there's very, very many similarities between COVID-19 and the Black Death. You'd be shocked as to just the similarities that are between the two. Uh, and, you know, I got uh, a few facts for you. I don't know if anybody's ever watched the Stephen King movie, The Stand. But if you watch, watch that movie, the first part of that movie, you would think, and that movie was done in the 80s, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure the exact year. But it was done late 80s or, or early 90s, somewhere in there the stand and i'll tell you that uh if you watch it you would think that it was a uh the people were going through a coronavirus at the time of course we find out later in the movie it's something different but however it was some kind of suspected to be some kind of flu type virus that people were getting and dying from so uh, i was very eerie stephen king did release a response to that and so yeah there is many similarities between the coronavirus and the black death and it's very eerie how his movie reflected on that. And I would like to say that I'm highly disappointed in the people that are hoarding toilet paper and certain foods. That shows that there is no care in this world when you're hoarding these items and people that need it cannot get it. You should be ashamed of yourself for hoarding so much of the toilet paper out there that people are unable to obtain toilet paper in many areas of the world 
because of the greedy individuals and uh, that that's definitely reflected of uh, their low morals and their low respect for human life and human uh, safety and well-being at all well really that speaks on who, who we are as human beings and any pandemic or any virus and what's happening today in the world really gives us a glimpse into how we've lost our sense of humanity how we've lost our sense of looking out for your fellow man it's all about me 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 looking after number one i've seen so many examples myself of it's all about me and no one is really looking out for their fellow man and people should be ashamed of themselves and we spoke about the social economic status of what's happening with COVID or the coronavirus the plague or the black death also had large scale social and economic effects many of which were recorded into the introduction of the decameron people abandoned their friends and family just like what people some people are doing with the coronavirus they fled cities shut themselves off from the world funeral rites became pre-functionary or stopped altogether and work ceased being done that was during the plague or the black death now let's talk about some of the horrors during the black death that you may not realize there were mothers that were taking their babies alive and throwing them into fires they were burning their babies alive now the book that alexandria showed you in the intro of this video this show actually has all that in great detail and there's hecker hecker uh who originally wrote the book um was a he was a guy that was doing medical encyclopedias at the time and he was a student of the plagues of many plagues throughout history and he wrote the book in the 1700s 1800s mm -hmm. okay and he wrote the book in the 1800s and uh if you if you look at his work he included the original doctor's notes now in the book that's been released the black death the bonus edition that is the best version to buy it's definitely got the most uh, definitely got the the best material in there uh it's got pictures etc uh you we uncovered graves of mass graves of the people that died during the black plague but some of the horrors were mothers taking their babies alive and tossing them into flames and also they were burning people they suspected that were practicing witchcraft during this time not just that, but they were also going around and killing Jews. That's just some of the horrors. And that should be the worst of the worst, I think, is taking your baby as a mother and throwing it into a fire alive. That That's that's horrific. Well, the, the book, The Black Death, with the bonus material, really gives you an insider look of what was happening during the times. And it gives detailed medical information. So it gives you a perspective. It's almost like you're stepping back into the 14th century and you're seeing it as it all unfolds and two of the more well-known plagues that really uh, really took a toll on Europe uh, was the Black Death which was 1347 till around 1351 and also the Great Plague of London in 1665 and Timothy touched on mass graves during the Black Death the the plague but we have to take into account again what's happening with COVID-19 and coronavirus where we've seen all over the media where there's mass graves in Iran and mass graves on Hart Island in New York City. And, and so let's also talk about the origins of the Black Plague. It, it originated from Asian countries, they believe. And so if we look at the covid we know that or suspect pretty much a 98 percent accuracy that that's probably most likely true that it did come from china uh that's the information that's been released as of the date of this recording 
and so uh yeah if you look at the black plague coming from an asian country as well uh that's another similarity but then let's go back to why they were burning jews and why they were uh burning witches at the time of the black plague well what happened was they the, the world thought god was enraged with them and they were causing everybody to die off and so what they were doing is anybody that didn't accept jesus christ as their savior they were killing them and so in the instances of the mothers throwing the babies on the grave that was not the case of that that reason but that is the case that they were burning witches and the jewish people and we all know about the holocaust during world war ii but if you go back and look at the killing of the jews during the time of the black plague it was just as, as mass killings and it was uh just as bad well let's let's sort of give you a little bit of a historical insight into the black death or the plague pandemic and it is also known as the pestilence and the plague and at that particular time it was the most fatal pandemic recorded in human history and deaths or the death toll they said are up to 75 to 200 million people in Eurasia, North Africa, and Europe. And they really say that the plague arrived in Europe October 1347 when 12 ships from the Black Sea docked at the Sicilian port of Messina and people were gathering on the docks were met by a horrific a horrific surprise most of the sailors aboard the ship were dead those were that were still alive were gravely ill and covered in black boils so can you imagine the scene of meeting people off the ship that were covered with black boils that oozed blood and pus and the sicilian authorities hastily ordered the fleet of death ships out of the harbor hastily ordered and let me just say this if you if you go back to the 1300s the 1300s the time of the black death the black plague if you go back to that time period medicine then was not as it is now and there was no cure for the pain that those people were going through there was nothing that was easing the pain and suffering there was intense suffering that the population was going through at the time. If you if you had the Black Plague, and you can imagine your relatives and friends having to watch you die, uh, millions and millions of people died all over the world. And so, yeah, there was nothing to ease their suffering. Again, if you look at your screen, this is the cover of the bonus edition book. This is the book that you want to get that goes into great detail about all this highly accurate uh, and again it was written by a medical doctor who was in the 17 who lived in the 1700s and uh, in the late 1700s and he died in the 1800s and he was a student of plagues and he he actually included the original doctor's note in this book this is a must-have if you read it just by reading this book you can experience and imagine that the pain that these people were going through and the horrors the world was going through and really they say that the plague was called was caused by bacterium yersinia pestis and uh, the yersinia pestis infection can cause and wait for it sept septicemia and pneumonic plagues and that's what COVID-19 coronavirus is the symptoms of pneumonic plague and it could most commonly result in the bubonic plague and the Black Death was really the second plague pandemic recorded after the plague of Justinian 15 the under 542 546 and so yes again the uh the doctor's notes are included in the book can you give me the book okay again the doc the original doctor's notes from the 1300s or are in this book and you'll be surprised at uh 
some of their recommendations on how to cure the Black Plague. And the, the, the original notes start off, we the members of the College of Phys Physicians of Paris. Now, why did they use the Physicians of Paris in the 1300s during the time of the Black Plague? Because in the world, at the time, this was the best group of physicians that existed in the world at this time. And so that's why these physicians were selected to be used. Okay, so let's, let's look at some of their recommendations. Now, we're going to start off here. Where it says at breakfast one should drink little supper should be taken an hour before sunset now let's understand this they're saying drink little because at the time a lot of people were drinking water in the 1300s and the water was actually thought to be highly contaminated so they didn't want you to drink unpurified or a lot of unpurified waters and so it says at breakfast one should drink little Supper should be taken an hour before sunset. Clear light wine mixed with a fifth or sixth part of water should be used as a beverage. Now, they believe that alcohol in the wine could definitely help with uh, some of this uh, suffering and pain because there was not a lot of medications during this time that could help with that. And they also believe that there was some type of cleansing that could be used with the alcohol. Also, it says beetroot and other vegetables, whether eaten, picking, or fresh, are hurtful. So it was recommended not to eat beetroot vegetables or other vegetables. And the reason why is because we understand that they, these vegetables had to be watered. And they believed that these waters were highly contaminated. Okay, and then it says going out, is not, going out at night and even until 3 o'clock in the morning is dangerous on account of the dew. Again, they're very concerned about the moisture. Only small river fish should be used. Too much exercise is hurtful. The body should be kept warmer than usual and thus protected from moisture and cold. Now, all I'm doing is giving you some of the doctor's recommendations. There's a lot in this book, but let's talk about how they looked at rainwater. Rainwater must not be employed in cooking and everyone should guard against exposure to wet weather. So again, they, they were definitely highly concerned about any type of water, river water, rain water, whatever. And so these doctor's notes, again, are included in these books. And uh, yeah, and actually one of the, the notes that they include that, okay, let's talk, let's talk about the waters. It says these corrupted waters, however, the heat of the sun cannot consume. So it's saying the heat of the sun cannot cure these waters neither could other wholesome water hail or snow and dew originate therefrom so they're very very concerned about the water during the time of the black plague and also some of the stuff that it talks about in the book uh that they used and, and they consulted with astrologers let's keep that in mind now you have physicians they were consulting with astrologers you're talking about people that are reaching out for any cure possible this book definitely goes into the fact that they were using astrologers to try to help with this. And they highly believe the sun could help kill off a lot of the disease. But they were concerned that the disease could not be cured, uh, cured from the sun once it had corrupted the waters. And as a historian, I find it absolutely fascinating between the similarities, the correlation between the Black Death, the plague, and current COVID-19, where, as I've said previously, the plague really created a religious, a social, and economic upheals with very profound effects on the course of European history. And currently COVID-19 coronavirus is doing the exact same thing worldwide. The similarities as well folks and as we've stated the Black Death, the plague probably originated in Central Asia or East Asia and does that sound familiar folks on what we're experienced today? I want to go back into the astrologers real quick before we move too far on. 
it says this in the doctor's notes from the 1300s we are of the opinion that the constellations now keep in mind this is coming from the greatest physicians in the world that they are of the opinion and i'm going to read the direct quote here we are of the opinion that the constellations with the aid of nature strive by virtue of their divine might to protect and heal the human race and to this end in union with the rays of the sun acting through the power of fire endeavor to break through the mist and so they definitely believed in the constellations and they believed in the sun now this is coming from physicians now that should tell you something if physicians are using constellations in the sun we know that the sun can purify things the rays from the sun does have a cleansing effect so they were right on that but prior to well let's say after uh, the black plague somewhere hundreds of years down the road to when you get to where we at now in 2020 you can see that we don't even really use astrology too much today it's kind of like been almost uh, uh, this what is it made extinct in our world but back in the time before the 1300s astrology constellations all that was very important and if you go back even to uh, 300s uh, uh, BC before Christ existed it was very important even at the time of Christ being born it was important and so throughout history it's been important but some some way we lost our our, our we lost our way yeah in regards to the philosophy uh -huh. and the methods that were used by the ancients and what is something that is more striking or something that you should really think about the black death it's estimated to have killed 30 to 60 percent of Europe's population folks that's a statistics that is very very grave and it really took 200 years for Europe's population to recover to its previous plague black death level and uh, outbreaks of the plague recurred until early 20th century as well and uh, it's also interesting to note on a historical note that recent research has suggested that the plague first infected humans in Europe and Asia in the late Neolithic early Bronze Age they found evidence going way back as well and I want to talk about this whole isolation thing uh, and, and the distancing and stuff, okay? Even with the COVID virus, we understand that uh, there were sailors that were at sea that caught this virus, okay? They caught COVID. And so during the time of the Black Death, there were also sailors that were catching the plague. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, how much more isolated than you can you be than in the middle of the ocean? And it's also interesting to know, I know in uh, earlier on, we gave you the symptoms of COVID-19 coronavirus, but here are some symptoms of the Black Death, and you'll note the similarities. Swollen lymph nodes, some as large as chicken eggs in your groin, armpit and neck, fever, chills, headache, fatigue and again muscle aches so the similarities in the symptoms are so very similar that you really can't discount and let's talk about something that I kind of want to talk about that I find fascinating as well and it's plague doctors and a lot of you or some of you may not be familiar with plague doctors before who we go into that I just want to point out the mask thing okay I don't know if people are watching but I think it was last week the Surgeon General was doing a press conference and the reporter asked him why did he recommend masks if they were not going to work his answer was well yeah it's true that those masks that they rec that they had recommended the, the cloth ones but not without a filter will not keep you from catching the virus and so but however they were hoping that if you coughed or sneezed in your mouth it would help you from spreading the virus so those masks actually do not work if they do not have a filter on them it was only put out to recommended to use to give the population a security blanket 
so there not would not be more hysteria than there is right now and so uh yeah those masks do not work in order to have an appropriate mask that works you do need a filter on it that's going to purify that air coming in and uh and trump knew it the surgeon general knew it and uh and pelosi knew it and schumer knew it so both sides the democrats the republicans whatever you are your sides knew it both sides knew that those masks were not going to work but uh yeah they've been putting out just to prevent the more hysteria and panic in the world that yeah those masks should be used knowing if you go back and look at the surgeon general and what he said yeah will not catch you from keep you from catching the disease or the virus um but it would probably if you sneezed or coughed while wearing the mask help you from giving it to somebody else and so that's very important to note so if you're going to wear a mask these cough ones uh you you'd want to wear one that has a filter on it so it's really a false sense of security right it's just giving everybody a security blanket so we don't go into mass panic mass hysteria Yes, and I only know that because I was in the military and we trained for all different types of uh, warfare. And uh, we had extensive training in biological warfare, chemical warfare, etc. And I will tell you that we were told without a shadow of a doubt that we had to wear the gas mask that had the charcoal filters or else we, we would, you know, you're up the creek. These are the masks that we were provided uh, we actually had charcoal canisters that we would use to help purify the air if we were ever to experience anything like this. So yeah, they did put out a false sense of security for the world uh, so there wouldn't be even more panic to give people some kind of security blanket so they could go to the stores and shop and, and hopefully by having distancing uh, that they wouldn't be uh, uh, passed around that much. And again, talking about uh, plague doctors, and again, we're on the subject of masks. Uh, the plague doctors wore a mask with a bird-like beak to protect them from being infected by deadly diseases such as the Black Death, which at that particular time, here is another similarity. They thought that was Black Death was airborne, or airborne, so uh, transmitted by airborne. And again, a plague doctor was a medical physician who treated victims of the bubonic black plague. In the times of epidemics, these physicians were hired by towns where the plague had taken hold. And since the city was paying their salary, they treated everyone both the wealthy and the poor uh, it is however known that some of these plague doctors were known to charge patients and their families additional fees for special treatments or even a lot of these false cures and um, they rarely cured their patients rather they served to record a count of the number of people contaminated for demo demographic purposes, folks. And take a look at your screen. You'll see the mask that they wore. And, and take a look at the mask. Very unusual type of mask. But these are the masks that they actually wore. And then if you want to look, look at this picture right here, you'll see the entire uniform. And so, yeah, this is, uh, they, they, were, they were using heavy-duty gear, your heavy-duty uniform at the time. And so, uh, doctor's masks do work to prevent certain things but it does not work against COVID uh, those even the masks that you use if you're doing yard work or spraying chemicals they will not work against COVID uh, Surgeon General has admitted to that and so uh, it's just yeah it's just a false sense of security and you know what something that I want to touch on again it's another similarity uh, between the Black Death the plague and COVID-19 coronavirus and really how did the black death really end and listen to this very closely folks the most popular theory on how the plague ended is through the implementation implementation of quarantines quarantines are something that we're familiar with today and the uninfected would typically remain in their homes 
only leave when it was necessary and while those who could afford to do so would leave the more densely populated areas living in greater isolation. So there is another similarity between the Black Death and what we're experiencing currently with quarantines. Another word for quarantine is social distancing. And I experienced none of that social distancing. Like, it's very funny because if you go to, like, the Walmart, almost everywhere has a Walmart. So I'm going to use that as an example because uh, we, we did actually go into the Walmart. So if you go to the Walmart, uh, yeah, they, they're sitting there counting people that's coming in or whatever. And so you go into the Walmart and then you go down these aisles, but there is no social distancing in there. Uh, people will walk right up on you. And so uh, we've experienced no social distancing in the Walmart at all. And so uh, quarantines do work. And uh, but we understand people have to get back to work if you pour to put because I mean, let's look at what the governments are giving the people. They're not giving them enough money to survive. Uh, and so people have to go back to work to make money. Now, AOC, a politician in the States. Uh, actually literally said literally said it is crazy that people want to go back to work just to put food on the table well damn are you going to die from the coronavirus or are you going to die from starvation this is coming from a woman who has proven herself to not be very intelligent but I, I cannot believe that she actually said that although that should not be above, uh, uh, beyond belief because uh, she said a lot of stupid stuff since she's been elected but yeah so i i really think that uh that is not a choice that people should have to make morally uh you have to put your life on the line to be able to put food on the table to provide for your family this is not something in this day and age that any person should have to be faced with and as we said so really what we've said the book on the Black Death by J. Hecker is really an insider's view with medical information on what was happening in the front lines with the Black Death and the plague. And here really is another way of telling a story. A lot of you may not have uh, even thought of the similarities and this one pertains to the Great Plague of London in 1665 where nursery rhymes and songs were a common way for folks to tell stories to each other an example of this is ring around the ring around a rosy or as we say now ring around the rosy you may have not thought that that song was pertaining to the great plague of london in 16 65 and the roses really mean it's a euthanism for deadly rashes posies in the nursery rhyme is a preventative measure a shoes pertains to sneezing and falling down pertains to death so we have a nursery rhyme that is showing you the great plague of london symptoms preventative measures and ultimately falling down death and if you look at your screen there will uh well there's a couple different versions of the song uh and so the original song as you as you just heard from alexandria it's uh it's very uh what you call it it's very horrific and it's really foretelling and I'll kind of break it down a little bit more where ring around the rosy uh, pertains to a round rash marks on the skin which is one of the first signs that a person has the plague a pocket full of posy again is um, ways used by people in the middle ages to try and fend off the plague they stuffed their pockets with posies which is flowers ash you ash you sneezing was an early sign of the plague if it was the pneumonic plague however not all types of the plague involve sneezing 
or ashes, ashes or other versions say the dead were often cremated in the time of plagues and we all fall down. Most of the people stricken with the plague unfortunately died, folks. And so the next time you hear that song and you hear ashes, ashes, think about the mothers that threw their little babies crying into the fire. And then think about how disturbing that little children's song actually is. And so, uh, you know, if you look back to some of the older nursery rhymes and children's stories, they, they're very dark and, and a lot of people don't realize it. And so uh, that one is definitely one of them. Well, really, Ring Around the Rosy, really, or Ring Around the Roses, <clears throat> the fatalism of the rhyme is very very brutal and uh, you may want to take a listen to it again and really dissect dissect the words on uh, how it's really telling a story of uh, the great plague that uh, affected London in the year 1665. So today what we've really tried to uh, show uh, shown our listeners is how similar the Black Death, the plague, is in so many ways, so many levels to COVID-19, coronavirus. It's not even funny. And the book, The Black Death, by Jay Hecker really shows you, gives you a frontline view on what was happening with the medical profession, how they were treating people. And that really gives you a perspective on how in the Middle Ages they viewed plagues, they viewed the symptoms, and they viewed ways on how to combat these hidden deadly enemies which are viruses plagues and pandemics which are truly hidden deadly enemies and so again this is a picture of the cover of this this book it's the bonus edition now there's some other versions of this story out there this this contains the original doctor's notes uh and the story as it was written by j hecker and so uh, this is the version, the bonus edition is definitely the one that you're going to want to look for and get. This is what it looks like. We will provide the links to buy this book in the description below. And you can feel the pain of the people when the people that caught this black death as they were suffering. I mean, I don't see how you can read it and not uh, feel their suffering and uh, feel the, the extreme emotion and turmoil that was happening during those times as we are feeling right now and listen to this statement and this sort of brings it all into play and you may remember this statement history repeats itself so when we talk about the black death the plague uh, COVID-19 coronavirus history has a way of repeating itself and uh, we hope that this show shows you the similarities medically symptoms and how people were treated the social economic impacts that are we are being feeling or f that are being felt worldwide at this particular time isolation social distancing they were doing the same things back in the black death the black plague just using uh different wording different formats but you just have to sit back and digest how truly in fact history does repeat itself folks and so uh, i hope you enjoyed this show and so uh that's it for us and i, I would like to say as part of the world paranormal research society we got more haunted locations that's going to be we're going to be bringing to you so uh just keep uh keep keep checking on our youtube channel and uh and a website here's the website worldparanormalresearchsociety.org and uh we've been so busy that we haven't been able to really update the site that much but we plan on getting back on there and updating the site and so uh yeah more great locations to come so do yourself a favor folks Pick up a copy of The Black Death. 
it is a purchase that you will not uh, it, it's just a must-have for your reading library folks packed full of information uh, horrific information and uh, I, I like the fact that all the original uh, doctor's notes are in there the recommendations what to stay away from what to do uh, it's in there so that's great take care everybody bye